What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here, honey. I thought it was going to be lighter than this. I said I had somewhere to go. I did my just did my real Housewives of Orange County review, and I did that entire review without a damn microphone. So the quality is going to be different on that video, y'all, FYI. Um, I had the, the microphone attached here, but I didn't have the attachment on my recording device. So, yeah. So the quality is going to be a little compromise for your girl it's a less than a 30 minute video so hopefully you can hang honey uh you can still hear me though i'm just gonna turn the volume up on the video i guess anyway so i came down here to talk about miami bienvenido a miami yeah i came here to talk about miami but i need to be stopped and parked and i thought it was going to be lighter when i went to make this run when i went to run make this run and I thought it was going to be lighter than it is right now. So hopefully by the time I get to the park, I um, it will be lighter. And if not, then we're just going to go upstairs. So we'll see. We'll see, honey. If not, we'll just do it at the house, girl. Oh, God. So anyways, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if, if by the time we get there. It was a pretty good episode. The end with Todd and Peter, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, he wasn't, was he wrong? He was upset and he said things that he was upset about. I mean, but I just, I don't know. I just, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I feel bad for Frankie because I feel like Frankie is just sitting there like, what about me? Like, y'all arguing about how y'all are treating me. Like, what about me? And then I and then I thought it was like when Todd was like, you know he's disabled, right? And he was like, stop, don't say that. I'll beat you. I'll beat your ass or something. He said, and he was like, I will fight you back. That's the difference. Come on, because I'll fight you back. Um, You denying that your brother is disabled is ridiculous he has a brain injury he needs to be checked out y'all need to have therapy like he was right like i agreed with everything todd was saying it's just like when he was like i don't know it was just harsh it was harsh you know and i'm sure alexia didn't like to hear it peter didn't want to hear it he kept saying that peter was drugging you know Frankie and when you put it like that no they're doing drugs together you know they're smoking weed together and when you say doing drugs and drugging the way you're making it sound the way you're framing it I was with Peter on that like dude why are you saying it like that like you're just making it sound like real effed up you know and he was like well that's what it is you know and then you know Alexa was sitting there off to the side listening to them and here comes Frankie he's just looking like you know, just stop giving your brother drugs. Do more stuff with him. Go play basketball with him. He likes to play basketball. He said he was like, I, like, I want to play basketball. You know, your brother has a brain injury. He's not functioning where he was before. You are all, everybody needs to make some adjustments. And it's going to be more than just hanging out with him, smoking reefer. You know what I'm saying? And I, like I said, I agreed with Todd. It was just his delivery. I was like, ooh, yikes. I was, I was kind of. It was kind of, he, he told Alexia, you were, a, you are an enabler. I said, oh my God. He was like, y'all don't think y'all need professional help. <laughs> like, they do. They have a lot. And I can imagine Alexia has been through a lot. You know, I watched Cocaine Cowboys um, the other day. And Peter's father was a drug trafficker. Okay. And um, <laughs> it is what it is. And <clears throat> for, 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 for some of the most you know, I guess popular dope dealers, cocaine dealers in Miami. That was his dad. And um, Alexa tells a story in, in Cocaine Cowboys how 
when Peter was born at the hospital, the dad was going to leave and they were waiting outside for him. They had put a hit out on him. Um, you know, the guys that he, he was working for, they basically all turned on each other, right? Because they wanted, they wanted their freedom. And um, Peter's dad could have been dead, right? So the trauma and all that stuff Alexa's been through and then the, her son to come through and have a brain injury. And then I, I, I think that Peter is in denial. That's what it seems like because he got mad when Todd said, you know, your brother is disabled. And he was like, don't say that again. Like, OK. All right. He is, though. You can't deny that. And you cannot be in denial. And she was like, yeah, we probably do need help. And I am probably an enabler because I'm a mother. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Enable your children because that's that's fucking weird because now you're going to create this environment where they're always attached to you and stuff. And that's just a weird relationship to have. You know, we talk about real relationships. I'm going to talk about Jim Jones later because that shit was fucking weird. Um, I am going to go to the park because it's about the sun is coming up. And by the time I'm done, um, you know, I've already started. And by the time I set up, if I, when I get upstairs, um, I don't feel like doing all of that. So since we're here and the camera is on and the microphones are connected, we are going to continue right here. Okay. So let me get our parking space together. As soon as the time changes, we'll be back down here again. You know what I'm saying? We'll be back down here. It's always raining and stuff. So let's just park we're here it's, it's enough enough light enough light for your girl let me turn this it's sprinkling so yeah so that you know with the situation with peter like i said i just felt like you know he was um and he's in denial so we start off with julia and martina and diva the goat i thought it was so cute i was like look at diva oh my god I want a goat so bad. Oh my God. I love little goats. Like that is so cute. Um, so she, they, they said something about the foot massages, right? Martina brings it up or Julia brings it up. And, um, she says, you know, that Martina knows that she's very flirtatious. She's okay with that and stuff like that. And that, um, should I turn this light on? Oh, come on lighting. Yes. That's cute, right? Okay. It's okay. So she says, um, but she knows I'm going home with her. So Gertie and Adriana, she needs to figure out what's going on between them because Adriana is like a cat, you know, a sexy cat with her cleavage and everything going. I was like, why is she describing her like that? And then she, then she described Gertie as a fireball. And she says, I think it just, they got, it just, it got too much in between them and hopefully they can kiss and make up. So we'll see Gertie and Russell when he, when the, before he came on the screen, I have right here, Dennis, I don't know why I wrote his name, Dennis, but it's Russell. Gertie and Rush, Russell are going out to dinner and um, she talks about how she knew that he was the one when he um, was taking out her weave. She's like, you know, that picture of us where you got the comb in my hair or whatever. So she knew he was the one when he helped her take her weave out. Um, cheers to us. I love us. He was like, you better. And you balance me out. You never tell me to chill out or anything like that. And she was like, opposites really attract and he's like, you never tell me you're too, you never tell me you're too much. And he was like, yeah, I think it was nice that he told her, you know, you are who you are to your core. You can't apologize for that and you can't change and people can't expect you to change. And that's the good part about you. And you basically been successful the way that you are. And it's to me, I feel like she, she's just high strung and high energy and she has a motivation and she shared with us later that, you know, her brother died in the earthquake in Haiti and her two nieces. And so that was kind of like she shared that that's kind of like a motivating factor for her. And she would always just keep going for her brother. And that was very touching. 
And she just said, you know, like these women, they don't know me. And the reason why I have so much joy is because it comes from a place of sorrow and I need to be joyous. I need to, you know, but Gertie, we want to make sure it comes from an authentic place that you're not overdoing it because some people can feel that if it's over, it's just over. It's too much. Your energy may be too much, but that's not to say that you need to adjust your energy to meet someone else's energy. You just need to go and find other people where your energies are harmonizing instead of, you know, creating static. That's it. Don't change your energy. You don't need to change your energy and you don't need to match her energy or you don't need to bring down your frequency to meet her where she is. You don't need to do none of that. All you need to do is fine tune yourself So that other people who are on your frequency are attracted to you and come around you. And that's just what it is. And that's just what it is. Um, He said, if if, nobody's going to change you. And then they gave each other a kiss. And it was so cute because she was like, oh, I I thought I I wore the lipstick that wasn't going to come off. And she wipes his little lips off or whatever. So cute. Alexa and uh, Marisol and her husband are meeting Alexa and Todd out um, for drinks. And baby, Marisol gets there. They order drinks. He said, keep keep the drinks flowing. I said, yes, I love it. I love it. They started laughing. The camera was <laughs> the camera was making it look like they were getting drunk and stuff. But honey, they were drinking. She was like, Do, are you enjoying your cock? Because, you know, that's what she calls cocktails. <laughs> Her husband was like, yes, I am. <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. So they're drinking and laughing and this and that. So Alexa is like an hour late. Alexa gets there and she says, so what are we going to do for your bachelorette party? And what are we going to do for the bachelor party? And she was like, you know, whatever can go on, whatever hanky panky can go on. But then Alexa wants to be at the bachelor party. I was like, girl, Alexa, give it up, whatever. So they, um, when she mentioned, when Marisol mentioned Gertie, um, Alexa rolled her eyes. So I don't know what that's about. So we'll see. I don't know what that's about, but basically they haven't found a location. Um, they haven't found all these places, but let me tell you something, the way that Gertie makes it seem that questionnaire, if you would have filled out that questionnaire, maybe she would be further along in helping you in what you want, because that questionnaire is her needing to know what you want and giving her details as to what you might be interested in. That's her job. But if you don't give her what you want in the details, everything she picks out might not be what you want. And then you'll be discouraged. So help her help you. And that's just how it goes. That's it. Um, so she says she, she mentions Todd and Peter, how they have to have their conversation. And she's, you know, a little, you know, apprehensive about that. Larsa and Adriana and Kiki meet up at Larsa's house and Kiki brings her daughter. So cute. The little girl is so cute. It's like, come on, Kiki. So they're interested in OnlyFans. They are really interested in OnlyFans and Larsa is putting them on up on game on what, what you need to charge and stuff like that. And Larsa was shading the fuck out of Adriana. She was like, girl, you could get about $5 for your fee, $5 a picture, just $5 a picture. You can get $5 a picture for your fee. You have to have a really good caption and something else. But she was like, Kiki, Kiki is going to make a lot of money on OnlyFans. Kiki was like, I'm about to make me some money. Well, I'm about to do a little modeling, a little nude modeling and stuff like that. And they could pay for the pictures. Ciao. So she was like, yeah, I'm going to make me some money. Um, but Adriana, your page is not even giving that. And then they showed some old ass Instagram pictures from Adriana's page. Adrienne's like, yes, I can get more than $5 for my feet, girl, whatever. She was like, "Um, do your kids, what do your kids think about OnlyFans? Larsa talking about my kids think it's for, it's a website for moms. Girl, shut up. No, they don't. And you know, they don't think that. Why would you even say that? So stupid. Uh, Kiki was like, I'm about to be rich. I said, I know that. I know that's fucking right. I like Kiki. I love Kiki. She's so beautiful too. So Nicole and her mom, Surreal, they were having a conversation, sitting down, having drinks. And her mother asked her, when was the last time you talked to your, talked to your dad? She was like, why you haven't talked to your dad in like two weeks or so? She was like, I haven't talked to him in like two weeks. It's been like a week or something like that. She was like, why? 
Um, she was like, uh, because when he got out of prison, he was acting like instead of taking care of his family and mending the relationships with his children that he left to go to jail, he came out of jail like, where the hoes at? <laughs> He's been out of jail for 15 years and he still can't get his shit together. And the mother is still there supporting him. She says, I don't understand how my ma my mother manages to be there for 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 him. Um, she says that she kind of wants her dad to be involved with her son and, you know, maybe he'll get it right. To me, I don't think that it's good to try and like see if your if the grandparent can now get it together with the grandkid. I don't operate from that place. If you were fucked up to me and you never changed and we can't have a cool relationship because you can't change you are going to imprint all of the same bullshit that you imprinted on your chi on your on your actual child onto your grandchild and the best thing to do is to don't allow the grandchild around the grandparent because they haven't changed her dad you see next episode he comes to the goddamn she decides to meet him and he comes to the goddamn lunch drunk she was like you are intoxicated he's like what I'm not a doctor. She was like, you can't even say it. <laughs> she had tears in her eyes. It's not funny. But that's the thing. You feel like I don't this obligation to the grandparent to say, you know what? You have a grandchild now. I'm going to give you a chance. But guess what? There has been no consequence for the, the behavior that your father or your mother has treated you. There has been no consequence. They don't change. This is the reason why. And I can I could really relate to this. That's the reason why you don't fuck with them because they don't change. They operate from a, a, a different space. And because they have people like the mother who can still manage to be cool with him and to take care of him and to be there for him, there's no consequence for his bad behavior. So why should he change? So what you're going to do now is give your child an opportunity to experience the same person. So in, in that, you're creating a generational imprint, right? And if you don't want that to happen, it's best to limit the time that your child spends with that grandparent or not at all, because it's not... If you don't want the same, if you don't want your child to experience what you experience, don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. Don't do it. And I and I'm speaking from experience, okay? Um, once you cross me, my image of you changes. It's not a good quality to have, you know. And I do hold some resentment for that. I could totally relate to what she was saying, what what Nicole was saying about her dad. She was like, "Well, you should talk to your dad. You should sit down and have a conversation." with your dad. And she was like, no, it's easier said than done. Then this motherfucker shows up drunk. What y'all think of the, the, the ambiance. Okay. Um, Adriana and Jacob go and look at vintage cars. Um, Adriana wants an Alfa Romero spider. She ends up buying one. Um, Julia shows up there. She's looking at, um, Jacob up and down and stuff like that, <laughs> acting like she's jealous. And she says that Adriana says that being around Julia has helped her open up her ideas around sexuality and things like that because her so far with men it hasn't been much luck she's bobbing for apples and she keeps getting the apples that she's getting and she's tired of bobbing for apples so she says everybody is fair game so I guess that she's ready to dive and dip her toes in the lady pond I almost said something else Alexia and Todd um, are sitting down having a conversation about Alexia's mother and basically her quality of life has, um, been, you know, it's dwindling. She's getting older or whatever like that. Um, so they talk a little bit about that. She wants to go see her mom and wants to take Todd with her. And, um, I, he was like, what to ask for your hand in marriage? I, that's, it's too late. So anyways, she needs another ring. She says that ring that she was looking at, that was $30,000 with all those baguettes going all the way around. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. It was so pretty. And it reminded me, it's so funny. It reminded me um, back in the day and it was an ad by De Beers. It was a right hand ring campaign. 
and it was it was for women who hadn't you know not married or whatever because the left hand is for the um the wedding ring right because they say there is a a a vein in the left finger that goes to the heart from the left finger to the heart so that's why you put it on the right the left ring finger that's a uh, old story i don't know how true that is right um and so De Beers had this ad, um, this campaign for right hand rings for women who were not married or whatever. And I remember being so like, like realizing like, oh my God, this is such a great idea. You know how old I was? 28. I looked it up. I was about 27 or 28. I looked it up last night because it made me think about this. And um, that just her looking at that ring made me think like, how old was I when I realized like, Yes, a right hand ring for women who don't want to get married and don't, you know, who are not looking for none of that. I was 27, 28. So I've I've always tell people I've always had the ideas that I have about relationships, even before I had bad relationships. It was just always based on what I observed before I actually had the experience. So I've always been like that. I was like, how old was I when that damn De Beers ad came out? And I looked it up last night online and I was around 27 or 28 years old when it came out. So that just brought back a memory for me. Anyways, um, so basically Adriana says if her, if Todd and Peter don't work, hash it out and work it out, I, it won't be no wedding. The wedding won't happen. And it just made me think like Alexia is really that those are her sons. And it's like, how, how do you make that choice? Do you choose your son getting along with your partner or do you choose I'm okay with my partner do you need your son to get along with your partner Um, if you have a close relationship with your son of course you want your son to get along with your partner because now you're going to all be spending more time together and she just basically said if they can't hash it out the wedding won't happen but the wedding's going to happen Larsa and Lisa go out looking crazy um um, they sit down at the table. Do you do what you want to do? Make your own money. Now we're at that age. Um, Lisa says her husband thinks that all she does is sit at home and shop all day. She wants to do other things. Larsa says it's time for her to do other things as well. She's feels like, um, Oh, they talk about Lenny being the party police. He is a, he's Superman. He's just always doing stuff. So when he looks at Lisa, it doesn't look like Lisa's doing much. And so she's like, girl, I need to find basically something to do. The, with Larsa between Larsa and Scotty, she said she just woke up one day and was just like, I'm not, I can't do this. She said he was always moody. They were always getting into it. And she says, I was just doing everything by myself. She was a married single woman. Um, I have been reading, uh, you know, about this phenomenon as uh, of married single women, these women who are married, but they are operating and, and um, running their marriage, you know, by themselves and with the children and everything. And apparently there are a lot of women who are married single mothers. And so this was Larsa's uh, situation. And she started crying right there. And Lisa was like, don't cry. She was like, you know, it's sad. You've been with somebody that long. And it's just like, you wake up one day after 20 something years and like, I can't do this shit. This is a mess. And Scottie Pippen do look like he'd be moody all the time. Like, man, fix your face. (laughs) Anyways, Nicole and Anthony are going out to eat. They said they are foodies, honey. I love it. I said, I love a person who takes charge of the goddamn ordering and be like, let's get this. Okay. We ordering this, this, this. I love a person who does that. This is everything we're ordering. I know, I know the menu. We didn't already look at the menu before we got here. We are ordering this, 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 and this. They ordered so much food, honey. I loved it. I'm here for it. Hello, Anthony. Anthony was like, I'm fat. I can't help it. What, 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 I mean, what can you say? I said, I know that's right. So they sitting down having dinner, eating. They talked about Julia and Adriana's weird ass relationship and the foot rubs and stuff like that. She felt like they didn't, they feel like um, Adriana didn't do well with the, um, the showing at, um, of Martina's show. They felt like she didn't do that well. 
Um, I don't know how much she sold. We didn't get anything. I, I, I'm sure if it was successful, they would have said like, oh, this is what, this is how many paintings Martina sold. They didn't say that. Did they say that? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So maybe it wasn't that successful. Well, we'll see. Um, she says that her husband doesn't do well with drama. He's a little scared off by the women. Um, so she talks about rebuilding the relationship with her dad and she wants her, um, father to have a relationship with little Grayson. Grayson is so cute. She wants her father to have a little, a relationship with Grayson, but she feels like he missed the boat. She said, sometimes I'd be like, <laughs> she'd be like, yeah, maybe I'll do it. Then be like, no, nah, man, fuck that. Like, that, like I said, I could fucking relate. Like, you'd be like thinking like, mm, and then you'd be like, no, uh, uh, I'm not about to do that. And then it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. And if you have to be the one to break a cycle, sometimes it's a lonely place, but it's something that you have to do if you want to, to change the story, if you want to change the timeline. If you want to change your timeline, you have to make some choices and she tried, right? She goes and sits with the dad and he shows up drunk. So that's just a confirmation for you. Like, okay, what I said originally, my original thought was valid. And that's what I should have went with. Cause you showing up drunk, irresponsible, you know, you walking around like, He's still walking around like the flashy dude, you know, like he came sitting down, he had his sunglasses on and everything. I was like, oh, okay, see, uh-uh. So she says she wants to see if they can make amends. But like I said, we see what's going to happen next week. Alexia, she wants her sons to walk her down the aisle. The aisle. Peter shows up. Um, when Peter said something about the flower girl, did you hear Todd say, are you volunteering? Motherfucker, what? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about anyway so she says she's not having any bridesmaids it's gonna be all about her but we need peter and todd to resolve their issues so everybody leaves peter and todd they sit down we talked a little bit about this on the way up here he says he got upset and it's not okay what happened but he that's how he felt and he needed to say and he doesn't really he said i don't take it back because you decided not to smoke with him anymore so obviously what i said kind of hit home for you he says i you know can you imagine somebody just laying on the floor or vomiting or anything like that that's that you know it's going to make somebody mad but then you told the dude that you are going to be a loser like your father that's what he, that's that i feel like that is where you're like you you're doing the most you're doing the most i know my father was trafficking drugs <laughs> and fucking the 90s or whatever 2000 was the 90s and 2000s baby they stayed on them they stayed on what's the guy's names what was their names i can't even remember the two guys the two heads of the uh, little organization baby they stayed on them until they till they got them but the other dude is out the um the one that they said wasn't that smart um he's out but nobody knows where he was he tried to move to the dominican republic and they said no Dominica Republica, the Dominican Republica. Okay. So they said, no, you had to get out. And so he got out and they don't know where he is now. Anyways, it's not about them, but he said he was a loser like his dad. Um, it's been difficult. Um, he says, um, but not maybe you're seeing it as a negative. You're attacking me. He's like, and you're like an outsider. You're like, he's like, I'm an outsider looking in basically. And y'all need help. You're an enabler. He told Alexa, she was an enabler. And you've only been here for the last three years is what they told Todd. Like, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know what we've been through. And he says, oh, you're drugging him. And she's like, you are, you keep bringing up the past and you're just making it seem worse than it is. And he says, um, what I have, what do I have to do? He says, your brother is disabled, right? And he was like, don't say that. And he was like, don't say that. And like, he was like, I, you know, Alexa at that time, she came back over as they were talking. She was like standing off to the side, listening to them, her and Frankie. And then later she came over there. And then when he called the brother disabled, Peter act like he wanted to fight him. And he was like, I'll fight you back. I don't care. I will fight you back. I don't appreciate coming in here and seeing this situation like this. And I'm an outsider looking in and y'all need help. Y'all need professional help. And that's it. He was looking at them like, y'all don't think y'all need help. <laughs> he 
be serious. He says, um, this is your fault. That's what he told Alexa. This is your fault. You're an enabler. You guys need professional help. And he's like, man, when you was arguing with me, you said every little insecurity about me to me. He was trying to hurt you. You got your brother so high that he passed out. And hit his and hit his head again. Like, come on, Peter. At least acknowledge that. Like, at least and he, so Peter has stopped smoking with Frankie, basically. And Todd is perspective is like, maybe I had to go off on you for that to stop because you shouldn't even be giving your brother drugs like that. You guys don't even know what the fuck is going on. I don't know. Do they have the boy in therapy? Like, is he in therapy? Nobody's in therapy. So we got to do what's best for Frankie and they hug it out. And that was pretty much the end of the episode, y'all. So we'll see what's going to happen next week with Nicole and her dad, honey. I go, Nicole, go with your first thought. Your first thought was like, nah, go with that. And you already know what it is. You know, you already know what your dad gives. And it's crazy because you try to give people chances but no, they're not. Why do you give someone a chance when you haven't, there's no consequence ap applied to the behavior that you're mad about? So what's the incentive to change? What's the motivation to change if there's no consequence for the bad behavior or for the behavior that you don't like or appreciate or feel that is healthy? There's no consequence. Guess what it's going to do? Them old ass people are going to keep doing it. They're, they're running in a loop. They're running in a loop. They're not going to change. They don't feel like anything they do is wrong. And so you're going to get what you're going to get. And are you going to allow those imprints that you had to unlearn and go to therapy for to be placed now placed on your child? Is that what you're going to do? Are you really being a good parent if you're allowing that? That's how I feel. That's how I feel. I feel like that. And, and I'm I, like I said, I'm speaking from direct, direct experience, direct experience. OK, Trust me. Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. We have another video coming. Peace.